Welcome back 40k enthusiasts to another Theory Hammer list discussion where today we're going to be going over another Tau army. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Retaliation Cadre. So if you guys like these kind of videos, Thunder Hammer the subscribe button, Thunder Hammer the like button, Nerds bell icon, check out other videos, leave us a comment, do all the YouTube stuff. So this is 2,000 points for Tau, and it's always going to be 2,000 points for Tau or for any, in any army that I'm doing here. Not fully painted as usual, it's my specialty, but it's pretty close, it's pretty, it's pretty close. I have made a lot of progress uh, so far with all my stuff, just generally speaking, so that is pretty good news just overall for the channel, so that when I do get them on camera for a battle report or for more list reviews or whatever, um, they'll be fully painted and they'll look nicer. Alright, so starting it off, we have the Pathfinders here. This unit is an auto-include, at least in my opinion because they have Scout and they have Infiltrate, and they have a Scout 7 inches, so they're pretty pretty awesome. You can kind of just pop them into the midfield, either behind something like this, or kind of in here even if you need to, behind this wall or whatever, and then you can Scout them up 7 inches. Really, really good at denying enemy Infiltrators, and then just being able to Scout behind cover so that you can't get to them, or if you go first, you can Scout them up, make a wall. I love doing that to people, putting them in jail. Pretty cool stuff, so 90 points, really good unit just for all those reasons. So definitely take a unit of Pathfinders if you're playing with Tau. They can also spot for two different things instead of one, so that's their ability. It's a pretty nice unit to have there. We then have three squads of the Stealth Suits. And these things are really, really nice to have. You shouldn't leave home without these either, because these give you reroll hits and wounds of one if they're guiding something. They each have a Fusion Blaster. The Fusion Blaster guy does have a... Um, a shield drone, so he is a little bit tougher. He also has a marker drone, and he can fall back and shoot. So we got three squads of those guys, and of course they're infiltrators as well. The Tau army has so many scout and infiltrator units or enhancements that give them access to that kind of stuff. It's just, it's all over the place. So three squads of infiltrators there with the three squads of stealth suits as well. Then we have the two piranhas. These have Scout 9, you know, they're real cheap at 55 points. The Stealth Suit Squads are like 60 points. But these things are awesome. They also are equipped with Fusion Blaster things. This one looks like broke off. It's not magnetized on there. Got it around here somewhere. We got two squads of these things, two different squads. They have Fusions, which are plus two, or plus four, excuse me. They're plus four Fusions, which are awesome. They Battleshock stuff. They fly up and scout. They do secondaries really, really well. And they're just... Awesome. They also have two Seeker missiles, and you should definitely be running Piranhas as well. The one problem with this army is that everything is a vehicle. So you are going to be giving up Bring It Down very, very hard. But I only have four characters, so I'm only giving up 16 on um, characters, on Assassinate, and it's hard to get all of them. So you'd have to kill all three units of these suits. This one I have a lot of control over because I can move it backward, fly it up into the air, or just move other ones backward and, and that kind of thing. And then we have Shadow Sun who's alone up, so it's hard to actually get to them. But getting the Bring It Down points, definitely easy against this army. But a lot of people run a ton of characters nowadays, and people don't run, don't really run tactical or fixed or whatever it is. Fixed, that's the one. People don't really run fixed even in that scenario because it's kind of hard to do cleanse every turn unless you're playing like Black Templar or something. So your army just has to be built for it. So when you're building army lists, don't be afraid to give up a single secondary like that. If you're giving up more than that though, like if I had five characters or even more, then it starts getting hairy because it's like, okay, well, I have to kill this stuff to play the game in the first place, so I'm gonna be getting bring it down points anyway. And if you have like seven characters, well, I'm probably gonna kill four of them and I'll probably get that other 16, so. When you're building lists, just make sure you're only giving up one secondary instead of two, I guess is the point there. Where was I? All right, so we have the battle suits next. These are three different squads. Two of them are the same, though. So these two squads here are both the Sunforge battle suits. So those are the ones that have the two fusion blasters and a four-up invuln. They reroll wounds and damage rolls against monsters and vehicles. So very, very anti-tank, very killy, very awesome. This squad, they have a cold star who is in an awesome pose. If I can get a cool shot of him here. He's kind of like coming down from the sky, blasting you. He's cool. I like him. All right, so we got this unit with the Cold Star. He has four Melta guns as well, and he has the Star Flare Ignition system. So he moves around, jumps back into the sky, does really cool stuff with that. And the way that that works is at the end of your opponent's turn, the unit that has it, they can return to reserve. And then, you know, with these guys, they can rapid ingress for free. 
or if they need to on the next turn, or you can just bring them down because it's going to be your turn afterward. So Star Flag Nation, very, very strong to do on this guy. And the other unit is the same. They have the four of the uh, two melted guns apiece. But the difference here is that we have Farsight attached. Just because I have the model, uh, I should probably run him as a Cold Star as well and be a little bit better. But it's, it is what it is. Uh, he gives the unit plus one to wound. So now these melted guns are plus one to wound and rerolling wounds and rerolling damage. So also a very, very nice unit to have. And they have a four up invuln. They all have drones, they all have shield drones, and a bunch of gun drones, so it's a bunch of extra shots there as well, just to kind of pick off some infantry if you really need to, if, if that's the target that you're shooting at. Then we have the three Riptides. These things are super duper good for their points. They're super durable, and they're just awesome to have. They're, they're just, because they always hit on um, their ballistic skill, that's one of their special rules, and they can fall back and shoot. So they're just really annoying to deal with. You've just gotta get through them and you can't really do anything about it. When it has one wound left, it still falls back and shoots you at full ballistic skill, and then it gets guided and still does a ton of damage to you. The little trick that I'm trying here, the, the thing that probably sets this list apart from most that look like this in the Retaliation Chondra is that I'm running them as burst cannons, all three of them. I'm gonna try it out and see how it goes. I'm thinking that if I get within six inches, Having a bunch of strength 7 AP2, 2 damage shots, rerolling hits and wounds of 1, or just rerolling 1s to hit, it makes them a lot more efficient than them being strength 6 and AP1. So, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to give it a try and see what it can do. This detachment does also have access to a stratagem. It's, it basically gives you sustained hits if you're shooting at something that's blastable. If it's double blastable, so a unit of 10, you get sustained hits too. So these things can actually put out a decent amount of shots. They can get dev wounds once a game, so you're rolling a bunch of dice, you're getting like nine that you're rolling, you can get a couple through plus some other wounds. They're just not bad, and the volume of fire is something that I think I, I lack otherwise. So we're gonna see how they do. They also have the fusion gun, and there's three of them. So three Riptides, coming hot, blasting stuff, blowing shit up. Then we have a squad of Kroot hanging out in the back here. They're a backfield screen unit. They are also just really nice to have because they're stealthy and they kind of just chill. They also make your home field sticky. So, sticky, icky, bobicky, I love me some Kroots. The last thing that we have are the broadsides. They're not WYSIWYG like anything in my army because WYSIWYG is fucking stupid, but they have the rail guns and I think we're probably gonna also give them uh, plasma guns as well. So, that's what I've written down anyway. Fusion, or uh, rail guns, <laughs> I wish they could take fusion, and plasma guns. The, the Seeker missile is cool, I just don't like the fact that it only shoots once a game, but more often than not, the, pla the plasma doesn't really do too much, so I'm not really sure what to do with that. I, I just don't like the fact that it's a one-shot weapon. I'm, I'm kind of weird like that. This unit, I totally missed this unit. I've, uh, hmm, Star Scythe? Star the, the ones with flamers, or um, burst cannons, that's what these guys are. We also have a Cold Star. He also has burst cannons, a high output burst cannon, and a cyclic ion blaster. So it's just a ton of shots coming out of this unit. Their rule is that the unit they shoot at is minus one AP. So like you get plus one AP twice. One from your detachment rule, you get plus one strength within 12. That's what the whole army gets as long as it's a battle suit. Plus one strength within 12, plus one AP within six. So if they get within six, this unit is strength six, AP two, Tons and tons of shot. It's like 40, 44 shots or something. Rerolling hits, rerolling hits of one, I should say, and rerolling wounds of one as well. So, this unit can put out a ton of shooting. And I'm actually considering putting the Star Flare Ignition system on this unit instead of this unit. So, I'd probably swap out the character because it looks cool. But yeah, this unit being able to fly, and it also makes them more durable because they do not have an invulns, and that's a way to keep them safe because if they're kind of behind here, you fly them up 12, shoot stuff, or you're flying them that way, shoot stuff back there. Um, and they're not as effective over on these kinds of, this is very open, so I'd like them over here. But you're moving either this way or this way, killing something and then jumping back behind terrain over there, so that's an option as well. And the nice thing about these kinds of armies in 10th edition is you can decide that while you're like playing the game, like when, like when, before you start. When you go to actually do all the stuff in the beginning, you declare which 
characters are attached to which units. So you could put that unit with these guys, except his weapons are different, so it might get a little weird there. But you could also do that as well. But total, that's gonna be how I'm gonna run it. I really wanna see how these Riptides perform because they seem like they'd be good at the Strength 7 AP2, and you're incentivized to move up anyway. This addition is stupid, and I have to move shit onto objectives in order to win now because it's dumb. So I've gotta just get there now and kind of be there. Uh, so do you. So I'm, I'm incentivized to get within six to get the extra AP and to get the extra strength for all of that stuff. Do you like my Tau Army? Because I like my Tau Army. So let me know down below if you guys liked this video, if you guys liked my list, and if there's anything that you would change about it and why. So thanks for watching. As always, my dear theorists, my dear viewers, you guys are the absolute fucking best. Thunder hammer the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Check out our other videos. Hit Nurgle's bell icon. Do all of the YouTube stuff. And maybe check out our other channel as well. It is linked in the description. So thank you for watching. And until next time, I'll see you theorists in the next one.